A slow angle progresses at the rate of one thread per round. I find that it is often the most difficult angle for my students to learn, but if one is paying attention to a thread-by-thread -thread progression by both colors in join, it will be an angle worth knowing. Our shuttle throwing process is one we're already familiar with. We pass the shuttle from left to right and right to left, back and forth, over and over, building up weft layer by layer. We can imagine replacing a shuttle by moving all of the spools simultaneously back and forth. But we can't move spools simultaneously, so we have to move them one by one. To do that, we have to move them out of each other's way, moving the spool that isn't already at the edge to the edge first, then moving the next spool to where that spool was, and then the next spool on down the line. We've locked in our ends at the rightmost edge of each color area. Now we chain sheds and beat. We start weaving by moving the green straight into the shed in the place it is coming out of the shed and moving it to the left. The yellow will move to meet the green. The yellow will now back wrap, taking the thread behind where it comes out of the shed. This way it takes the thread from the green that the green has just turned around on and the green moves to meet the yellow. The green back wraps to cover a warp thread in preparation for the yellow to take it. If it failed to back wrap, it would leave an uncomfortably bare looking yarn. The yellow goes straight into the shed, completing its turnaround, and the green moves to meet the yellow. The green goes straight into the shed to complete its turnaround, and the yellow moves to wait for that thread to be accessible to it at the top of the shed. Now the yellow will back wrap around the thread it just waited for, and the green will come to meet the yellow. The green now back wraps to cover the warp thread in preparation of the yellow moving and taking that thread. Now let's weave some slow angle on the loom. What we're going to do at this point is to try to do a slow angle. We're going to slow angle in for two steps. And it's going to be this rust color on a brown background. Now a slow angle is usually uh, something that weavers uh, find a little bit or my students anyhow find a little bit harder to learn. Um, it involves doing a back wrap, but only sometimes. So it's kind of an every other thing. So this pattern is really um, a little bit harder to see, but it's not a difficult thing to do. The point is to move, uh, in this case, in. We are angling in towards the center, and for every round, we're going to move one thread closer to the center. Both colors will do a turnaround on the same thread before moving to the next thread. So we're going to be following a really uh, basic logic to do that. Now, um, we're going to start the same way that we've started the others. We have, uh, we, we lock in our ends on an open shed, which is the shed that exists when we uh, can actually move the weft yarn out of uh, from the warp. So I'm going to reload my shuttle here uh, so that it's loose. Uh, the warp hasn't yet changed and locked it in. So we haven't locked it in behind the changed warps. Anyhow. So let's go to the open shed, and I'm going to center the rust in the middle of this narrow width. I'm going to travel in 16, I'm going to count 16 threads from both sides, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. I'm going to use my hand to keep both of those sides. I'm going to uh, put the tail on the left hand side and the active yarn on the right hand side. Going to do the same thing with the rust. Tails on the left, active yarn is on the right. 
I am also going to double check the counting. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. So sixteen is the background color. There's sixteen background color and then the rust will fill in the space in between. So the the locked in ends are at the rightmost side of each of their color areas. So now I'm ready to start weaving. I'm going to change the shed and I'm going to move th these both of these straight into the shed for my first pass. I could go and do the first pass as a back wrap, uh, but that would move it over to the left one thread and I don't think that's going to help us. I think this will be more centered. So I've moved the rust over to meet where the brown was. Um, I'm also carefully locking in these turnarounds with as little extra yarn as possible. So I'll pull out that extra yarn and use my finger to pack it in. I'm moving the shuttle up. I'm, the brown is now ready to take that rust territory where that first turnaround has happened. Now, the brown wants to take that thread, but that thread is at the bottom of the shed, so it can't take it. But I know that when I change sheds, I will be able to see that thread and I will be able to take it. So I'm going to change shed, beat. Now the thread that the rust turned around on is now available for the brown to take. It's going to back wrap to take that thread. So um, let's uh, review the difference between uh, going straight into the shed and a back wrap. So uh, when I, the yarn comes out of the thread, the shed, it goes between these two warp threads. So if I go straight into the shed, I go straight down the same place where it's coming out. The alternative to going straight into the shed is a back wrap. And I call it a back wrap because that thread is behind, behind, it, it, it's it, not the direction I want to be traveling. I want this rust spool to be traveling from right, uh, from left to right, excuse me, and, um, and this is further to the left. So I, that's not the direction I want to go in. I don't want to go to the left, I want to go to the right. So at this point, I don't want the rust to take that thread. I want to go straight into the shed and I'm going to go up to where the brown is and I'm going to meet it. And on the left side here, the rust is going, to, or the brown is going to come straight up to the rust and it's gonna meet it and it is waiting for that rust uh, turned around warp thread to come to the top. It's at the bottom now. So I'm gonna change this shed. I'm gonna beat. Now that thread's on the top. Now that brown gets to finally start traveling in towards the center by one thread every round. So it's ready to take that by back wrapping. It's going to back wrap and take that thread. On this side, this rust, if it went straight into the shed, it would fail to cover this, this thread. And the rust has to cover that thread before the brown covers that thread, just the same way we did it at, the, at this first one. It's going to happen the same way every time. So the rust has to cover that thread, and the only way it can do that is to back wrap. So it's going to back wrap, cover that thread, and I'm using my finger to pack that thing in so I can see it more clearly. On this side, on the left side, the rust is going to come up and try and meet that brown. Uh, the only way it's going to do that is by turning around on that bottom of the shed thread. Can't do that yet. But in this case, the next thread, the brown turned around on that thread. Now it's got to turn around on the next thread. And it's the thread that the rust just turned around on. So it can take that thread. I'm going to chain sheds and beat. Now this brown gets to go straight into the shed, go out to the edge. The rust has to back wrap to cover this thread 
so it doesn't leave an empty space there. I'm going to use my finger, pack that down on this side. The rest gets to come up to the brown and meet it. On the left side, the brown has to take that rust thread. The one, the rust just turned around there, so now the brown can take it and have its own turn around directly on top of the place where the rust just turned, just turned around. So now I call this part completing the turnaround. When it goes straight into the shed and goes back to the salvage, it completes the turnaround that it started before. The rust is also completing the turnaround, which is preparing the, uh, the way for the next brown to turn around on that thread. On the left side, the rust uh, is coming up to the brown, and on the right side, the brown is going to, uh, it's meeting this rust, but it's ready to take that rust thread because it's already done a turnaround on this thread. So it has to take the next thread. So it back wraps to take that thread. The rust is going to go straight into the shed and come as close to that brown as it can. The brown on the left is going into the shed. It's basically doing the same thing. It can't. It, it's coming up to the rust, uh, and and it's waiting for that bottom of the shed thread to come to the top. So now this brown is, is going to take that top of the shed thread by back wrapping. This rust has to back wrap to cover that thread. And by turning around on that thread, the brown is now ready to take its fourth one. It's angled in for four rounds. One, two, three, four. So now we're going to be ready to step out. I'm going to change shifts and beat. And now the brown is going to go straight into the shed and out to the edge. The rust on this side, hasn't. we haven't made it to four on the left side. Uh, so the rust is going to back wrap to take that one. Now on, on this right side, I'm going to do the same thing I've done on, on other angles. I'm going to travel three top of the shed threads out beyond the point that I created previously. I'm packing in my left side turnaround so that it's as clean as possible. I'm taking the brown in and the brown is taking its last, its fourth and last uh, turnaround. It's going to create a point there also. Um, now the brown is going to go out to the edge this, on this side, um, we have three top of the shed threads and three bottom of the shed threads. So I can just turn around at the point that, uh, and complete the turnaround at the point where, where it's already resting. I can go three more top of the shed threads on, on the left hand side. Uh, so I'm stepping out. Oh, I didn't say that stepping out always means that these two yarns are in the same shed at the same time. They will make a very straight line as opposed to the nice wiggly line we made at the very beginning. Um, as we weave more, we'll be able to see that it's a very nice clean line. So the brown is going to come in from the salvage and come up and meet that rust. The rust has already turned around and made that point. So now, as soon as there's even just one turn around, the brown can take from the rust. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna change sheds. We're gonna back wrap to take that first thread. And on this side, we're gonna double check here too. We have three top of the shed threads. Um, and this is uh, the the right place for me to turn around. Based on that, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. I can I can see that it's the same distance from this point to this point as it had been from this point to this point. That's what matters. I'm gonna go straight into the shed. I'm going to bring the rest up to the brown uh, as close as I can get it, and I'm gonna meet it. 
the brown gets to meet the rust and it wants to turn around on that point that the uh, rust just turned around on. So I'm going to change shift and beat and brown takes the rust. So brown is taking its first one on this side. It's already taken one here. The rust is doing its second turnaround on the right side. It's it back wrapped to cover that thread. Now the brown is going to take that thread that we just covered uh, because that's the next thread. Last time it turned around, last time it was traveling in, it turned around on, on this thread. Now this is the next thread. That's the one it gets to turn around on. Change sheds and beat. I'm going to take the brown out to the edge. The rust has to back wrap to cover that thread and prepare it for the brown to take. The brown is coming in and taking that second thread, that rust, where the rust just turned around. I'm going to chain sheds and beat. I'm going to do another two rounds quietly and then step out on both sides and we'll call it a day. This is the fourth and in. Step out three. And there we have it. At this point, it is symmetrical. It's just making a third point on both sides, on, on each side. So at this point, we can count it and we can see that it's symmetrical. So that's it. I also want to draw your attention to these nice straight lines where we've stepped out and had the two threads in the same shed at the same time. Makes that nice straight line. Those little tiny white dots will disappear uh, or, or be negligible, <laughs> you won't notice them. Um, and that's in contrast with these nice uh, wavy line here. Um, so we have a straight line with the two threads in the same shed and the wavy line where they're in opposite sheds. But that's it, that's our slow angle. Um, I hope you'll go and practice that and master it. It's uh, very helpful. Thank you.